Hello everyone and welcome to your 85th Cocoa programming tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about save panel and open panel accessory views. Now an accessory view allows you to add a small little view inside the open or save panel at the bottom and to demonstrate this I have a little project here where when I hit this button there's an NS save panel that shows up and this little view that's at the bottom I've kind of try to make this simulate a little bit of what the Xcode save panel has when you go to create a new project and it usually prompts you the ability to add a git repo. I haven't really added any of the functionality but I just wanted to show you how you could represent that view in this example. So here is my little example of an accessory view inside of a save panel. Now uh, with that out of the way uh, let's just go ahead and see what I've set up here. So this is a brand new Xcode project. Um, if you're going to use an NS save panel, you need to make sure that you have permission to read and write on user selected files. So you'll have to change this option uh, by default. Then in, uh, I've gone ahead and created a new view controller. It doesn't have anything special set up. The only thing that I've set up is the nib file. And you can go ahead and set up this uh, however you want. Just add your constraints and um, you're good to go. So I just have this little checkbox that we're going to be using to enable or disable our git access. Okay, so uh, how do we set this up inside of a save panel? Pretty easy, you just create a new save panel instance and then you want to assign the accessory view. Now the trickiest thing probably about this is that it only accepts, accepts an accessory view, it doesn't accept a view controller. So this kind of leaves you in an awkward state where you have to basically control everything through the view. Uh, you can't really use view controllers, uh, otherwise you have to do some awkward dance to kind of keep them alive. And so any of the logic that you have through the view kind of has to be done through the view and it can't really be uh, maintained on the accessory view controller unless you want to keep that instance alive somehow. So what we're going to be doing is mostly just uh, using the view as kind of our main tool in this example. All right, so we have this accessory view on the save panel, and then we can just begin a modal sheet with the window uh, that we have in our app delegate. Okay, so how are we gonna set this up? Well, inside the accessory view controller, I'm going to basically allow you to generate a view. We're gonna give that view back, and this is gonna be the main entry point that we're gonna use on the accessory view controller. So I'm gonna make a static function here, and let's give myself a little bit of space here. So we want a view for panel, and we're gonna basically configure this out of the gate. So we wanna configure it with our initial values, and that state that we're gonna use, I'm just gonna use a bool in this case to represent whether the, the checkbox should be on or off by default. And then we're gonna have a callback, which will be whenever a state changes on the accessory view. Now, if you were making a more complex example, uh, perhaps you would want to have a state, uh, maybe a state struct to represent the entire state of um, your panel, as it were. So basically, if you wanted to have more state, I would sort of suggest you come up with a struct or something to represent that. But in this case, we're just going to use a bool here. So we'll have a bool and a void. And this is just going to be our callback for when this function changes as a result of the user clicking the checkbox. So I'm going to go ahead and create an accessory VC. And from that, we're just going to get the view. And I want to get the accessory VC dot view. Now, because we want to put the state on the view, uh, which again is kind of a weird anti-pattern, but we don't really want to have to rely on the accessory view controller to be alive for the view to work because the only thing that the save panel is going to hold is the view. So to do this, we're actually going to create a new subclass and I'm going to call it accessory view. And it's going to be subclass of NS view and this is going to be the thing that's going to hold the callback. So this, the view is going to be aware of its state. Again, kind of a weird pattern, but um, that's what we're going to have here. And then we're going to uh, have a function to set that up. Now before I do that, I want to make sure that this view is going to be an accessory view. And the accessory view I want this view to be an instance of. So change that class to be an accessory view. 
and now we should be guaranteeing that this view will indeed be an accessory view. Now, uh, to configure this, uh, I'm going to have an IV outlet for the button. And I'll just call it get button. And then we're going to have um, a configure option. So uh, we can just call this setup perhaps. And we will pass in the initial state. So again, if this was a more complicated view, you should probably represent your state using some kind of struct. All right, so get enabled. Um, that's fine. We're going to just set the uh, get button. And we're going to set its state to be on or off, depending on if get enabled is on or off. So that'll set the on or off switch uh, state of the button. And the last thing I want to do is I want to have an action for when we click the button. So get button pressed. And this is an NS button. And now when we alter the state of the button, we should also set that state for the callback, right? So we're holding on to the callback that we're going to inject into this uh, view basically initially. And then whenever the view is changing its state, it's going to call the callback a bunch of times. All right, so here we have this get button pressed and we're going to have, um, let's see, when we change the button, so let's get, uh, we can just use the sender, I guess in this case, we'll use the sender state. And if it's equal to on, then we will save that off in a variable. And we will call the callback with the new state. All right, so if we had more states in this case, perhaps we had other buttons that we wanted to choose from, basically we could just call this callback with the new generated state of the view. So we're not holding too much state in this accessory view, really. The only thing that we're truly holding on to is this callback, and that callback is going to kind of act as like a delegate for our, um, to call back into the save panel area, but because we don't really have, um, you know, strong references and stuff, we, we could change this to be a delegate and, you know, the view could be a delegate in that case, but I think the callback approach is pretty nice. All right, so now we have this accessory view. Let's go ahead and configure it. So I'll set it up with the ina initial get enabled state. We'll assign the callback and then we'll just return the view. All right, so there we go. Now we have our new view and I uh, need to make sure that I'm actually returning an NS view from this method and we'll be all set. So now inside of our app delegate here, instead of initializing this view controller and then accessing the view, we're just going to call into view for panel. We will set an initial state. So uh, let's just say that the initial state for get enabled is going to be true. And then the callback, uh, we can just make our own. So uh, let me go ahead and clean up this a little bit. So this is going to be get enabled. And we want to basically, in this case, I'm just going to print out the state. So um, let's just say get enabled. Um, and if it is, we'll say enabled. And if it's not, we'll say disabled. Um, git repo for project. All right, so whenever our view changes the state for the uh, get enabled button, we're going to call into this callback and we'll get the new state of the button. All right, so that should be pretty much everything we have to go with. And let's go ahead. Uh, actually, the other thing that we need to set up before we do this is our outlets. So we have our accessory view here. And the accessory view has an outlet for that button, so we can configure it. And then there's also the action, which is the get button pressed. And we want our button to trigger that action when it gets called. All right, I think that's everything. So let's go ahead and run that again. Here we go, new project. Click on that, we have our initial state. We can see that the button is selected, uh, is enabled by default. And when I toggle it back and forth, we can see that the button's disabled, the button's enabled, right? And we are always getting the callback for when that state changes. And as a result of those changes, right, we can do whatever we want. All right, uh, let's just show that um, the initial state actually does work. And we'll toggle back on our get enabled. Instead of it being true, we'll make it false by default. 
And let's try to run that again. And we can see that when this is initially set up, our checkbox will be off. And this is good for, you know, cases where your user probably disables Git repositories by default, right? And you'd want to remember that state. So you want to be able to inject the initial state of your view into that view. All right. So anyway, that's everything I have for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoy. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.